Good morning. I have one of my uh, buddies here today. Can anybody recognize who this is? I love these guys, and I love the movies. In fact, I love kids' movies. You know, I mean, who couldn't get, you know, excited about Woody and Buzz and the, in, what is it, the, uh, the Incredible? I mean, you could go on and on and on. When my grandson comes, he's just a really good excuse to watch kids' movies. <laughs> and he loves them, and I love them, and I like especially the ones that he loves, but they also have things for adults that are in there. They have funny lines or things that get their attention. And, you know, you realize that kids' movies aren't just for kids. Some of them are for the whole family. Well, folks, Vacation Bible School is not just for kids. I mean, we've had a great week, and you can tell there's been a whole lot that went into this, and your kids probably came home with lots of stories and stuff. But when it comes to the lessons of Vacation Bible School, they're for adults, too. So I'm going to do a really quick recap of some of the things that we learned today, and then we're going to hear from someone who's new to our story time and going to share with us a little bit about an important lesson. So day one, we learned, you ready guys? God is a friend who is real. We learned about Elijah, who was able to demonstrate the power of God. And we learned that all of us, at times, need that power to get us through the day, through the tough times in life, through the times when we just can't quite make it on our own. Day two, we learned, God is a friend who loves us. Yes, and we talked about Jonah. And Jonah was one of those guys that really enjoyed the fact that God loved him and God would give him a second chance, but he didn't much want anybody else else that he didn't like to have a second chance. He had trouble loving other people, and he had to learn a lesson that God's love is for others as well, and a lesson of forgiveness. Oh man, that one's good for kids, but especially for adults. That in order for us to be healthy and to move on in life, we have to be able to learn from God how to forgive one another. On day three, day three, we learned God is a friend you can trust. Thanks, God. Yes. And that there are fears and storms in life that cause us to call out to God. Just like the disciples when they were in the boat on the sea and the boat was about to get swamped, woke up Jesus and said, Jesus, don't you care that we're about to perish? And they found out that not only does Jesus care, Jesus can do something about it. Well, folks, as I get older, I find that those storms and fears in life that I had as a boy don't go away. Sometimes they get more intense. And I need Jesus as the calmer of storms, the giver of peace in the midst of the storm, just as much as I did when I was seven or eight or 10, or 12. On day four, we learned God is a friend forever. Sadness and loss come at all ages. We heard about loved ones that had passed away. We learned about pets that had died. And we talked about how the resurrection of Jesus speaks to us and helps us overcome sadness and loss. We talked about the sadness that comes when we do things that hurt other people, that hurt us, that upset God. We talked about sin and how Jesus is coming and being on the cross and the resurrection allowed our forgiveness, our guilt and shame to go away. But we also talked about how we miss people that are part of our life and then they're not there anymore. And that the hope we have through Jesus' resurrection and the fact that God's promises last forever allows us to still miss them, but not to grieve without hope. Well, folks, as an adult, as one that's getting into his 60s, those losses come more and more frequently 
in this time in life. And you understand that Jesus is not just for children. He is for all of us. But the tomb is empty, and Jesus is alive today, so we understand that God's love can last forever. Now we come to day five. That's today. And I'm going to start with a scripture from the book of Acts, and then we're going to hear from someone that's a part of that. Acts 16, verses 11 through 15. Luke is writing, and he's describing what he and Paul and some of their other companions are experiencing. He says, We therefore set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we, were, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Today we're going to talk about the fact, you ready guys? God is a friend for everyone. So let's meet Lydia and hear about what she has to share about God's friendship. Oh, hi. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt anything. I'd love to come to this riverbank to pray too. Can you tell me a little bit about why you pray? For forgiveness. For love. Yes. For food. For God to help us. Yes, for help and love and forgiveness. It's all wonderful. And I pray for the exact same thing sometimes. But I've been praying to God for a really long time. But something really exciting yesterday happened when I came to this place. I met a man named Paul. And he told me all about Jesus. What do you know about Jesus? Go ahead. He, he, died. he died on the cross for our sins. He gives us one thing. He lives in heaven with God. He loves that. Yeah. Well, I'd never heard of Jesus before I met Paul. But Paul told me God is a friend for everyone. Thanks, God. And the way God shared that friendship with everyone is through Jesus. In fact, Paul got a boat, sailed all around, went to all different kinds of people to tell everyone about Jesus. Now he said it's our job to make sure everyone knows about Jesus. Even though I never got to meet Jesus in person, I can still be his friend. And maybe you've never seen Jesus in person, but you can be his friend too. Anyway, I ended up inviting Paul to my house, and he's there now waiting for me, I suppose. I need to get back, but I came to the river to get a little bit of water. I'm anxious to get home and visit with him a little bit more about Jesus. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Life sometimes can be discouraging. It can be hard. It can be depressing. It can be tough. Things that can happen that throw us off and cause us to be afraid and cause us to be disrupted. And we need Jesus every day. People need to know Jesus. They need the hope that is provided, a realistic hope for the future, even in the face of death itself. They need the love that God gives us through Christ the love that accepts us and cares for us and provides for us. They need the strength every day to be able to overcome those things that are thrown at them. They need that encouragement of knowing that God has this, that our future is in his hands. And then once they have Jesus, they know that those around need to hear about Jesus too. Jesus is not just for kids. You know, I was 10 years old when I came to believe in Jesus. I was there when somebody that was 90 years old was baptized and placed her faith in Jesus for the first time. So kids learned a lot this week, and I'm sure they've been telling you as their family members about it. And the fact is, they have a message 
that's for us adults as well. Because sometimes God uses the language of kids and the love of kids and the actions of kids and even the voices of kids. Today's lesson is God is a friend forever. He can be your friend too. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for these kids. We thank you for the difference they've made. We ask that you would continue to bless them and watch over them and help them to grow in mind and body and especially in their relationship with you, Lord. Thank you for those that have been a part of this week and thank you for these families. We ask your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen.